Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you guys for stopping in. We are on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, episode 48. In any episode now, we're going to be in the Day of Reckoning, the Promise Day, which I have been excited for for quite a while now. But I'm a little bit nervous at the same time. Now, Al, I want to know what happened to him because Pride is using his suit of armor, and it seems like he's not there at all. So I don't know if they somehow bonded his soul to something else. Or if he went back to the truth as far as into the portal and stuff like that, and he's back with his body now, and he's going to have to be saved by Ed. Something wild is happening. Gluttony is back. Lanfan is back. Ling and Greed are kind of coming to an understanding as far as utilizing the body back and forth, depending on who's better in the situation. So let's dive in, and uh, let's see what happens in this episode. Why won't you just let me eat you already? <laughs> The ruler of Xin controls the Qi, knows the dragon's pulse. This knowledge allows him to govern the flow of our kingdom. We detected several large Qi converging out here, so we followed them. There's one more in the settlement nearby. It seems to dwarf the others in comparison. Oh, he's talking about Hohenheim. I was like, who, is he? who else is there? It, it's definitely Hohenheim. The lights are starting to come back on, which means Pride can use the shadows again. <laughs> Pride seems completely unbothered. The only thing I could assume is it's because it's no more than a vessel for him. So it's not actually hurting Pride, it's just hurting the vessel in which he's within. But the question is, if you destroy the body, then what happens, right? Because the dwarf in the flask needed the flask, I believe. He couldn't survive outside of it, but then he created the body. And I know that pride was limited to a certain area. And I don't know if that was like just the tunnels or if it was the tunnels and everything within the tunnels, like within central, within the, the country itself. I assume that's the only reason he's able to travel here. He may look like a cute little brat, but Selim Bradley's not human. How old are these photos? 20 years? And he's with a government official in every one of these. <laughs> Who is that? Someone out there? Oh no. A monster! I'm glad they shed some light for us. Now let's shed some of your blood. The woman who owns the bar, Madam Christmas, her real name is Chris Mustang. She's his foster mother. That's an interesting revelation. I did not. I would have never guessed that it was his foster mom or anybody even related to him, but I guess that makes sense. And I'm just curious. How they didn't find that out until now. You'd think that that's something, but I guess they got a, I guess they got enough stuff going on. They're trying to, you know, <clears throat> take over the world and murder everybody in a town. I guess they're busy. I'm only giving you a single order to obey. Don't die. What is this? Why can't I cut him? <laughs> I feel like this is a losing battle because eventually you're going to get tired and he's just going to keep going like this all day. I don't even understand how you fight pride. Like, I, I guess, like, again, you could destroy the body that he's in. But as far as the shadow version of himself, like, when there's lights and he can attack you with this, this darkness, I don't see any way that you could actually fight back. You really just have to defend yourself. I figured this might give me the advantage. Unless you want to destroy your brother. <laughs> Flash bomb! You gotta get him out of here now! And you're positive he's not still possessed? Yeah, I've noticed that if you sever a part of their body, it disintegrates into dust. The flash bomb severed the shadows holding Al's body. I'm curious why the flash bomb. Is it just because it's too bright? Oh, because I guess it, it gets rid of the possibility of a shadow. So I guess that I guess that would make sense. At first, I wasn't really sure. How many times have they killed you now? I lost count. <laughs> Don't do it, Pride! <laughs> no, Pride! Don't eat me! I can practically smell every movement you make. I could do without the ravenous hunger, but I suppose I'll just have to see it. Oh, so when he devoured gluttony, he took on gluttony base, so now it's like gluttony and pride all in one. See, I don't know how this goes, right? Like, cause okay, so. When, when 
the old guy smelled them out. He said that he could tell that there was a stronger one that dwarfed the others that was in the village. That was Hohenheim. So if that's the case, then isn't Hohenheim that much more powerful than Pride and should be able to stop Pride? But it makes it seem like Pride is like, ooh, Hohenheim, like I can get him. The same as when they were in the tunnel and Hohenheim kind of fell backwards and it was like, oh, you're in your cage. It was almost like, it, it, like, whew, I'm safe. I don't have to worry about it. When I feel like if he is also a walking philosopher's stone, obviously not maybe as strong as father is, Right, you'd think that he'd be able to do more, be more capable. But maybe he's never really honed his powers because he doesn't have the same mindset and he just wants to live a normal life. All right, this is getting interesting. I, I wonder how many more episodes we have until we get to the Day of Reckoning, but I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying them regardless. It's a buildup. I don't think that we're actually going to have the Day of Reckoning. Like Otherwise, that means everybody dies, I would assume. So I'm, I'm guessing that somehow they stop it, but we find out the purpose behind it, I believe. I'm hoping because I just want to understand why father wants to open this portal again, because he opened it years ago, got himself a body. And now he's trying to recreate the same thing. And I, I don't really understand why. Well, only one way to find out. I say that like every single episode, I appreciate you guys for stopping in, uh, stopping in and here. It's a, a you know what I mean. I can't get my words out, but I appreciate you guys. Shout out to my patrons. You guys are the best. I will catch you in the next episode, homies. As always, I forgot about the post credit scene, and we're, we're getting into the, the end of the show, so you know that these are going to be extremely important. So let's dive in. Let's see what's happening in this one. Mustangs gathered his subordinates and is sneaking around. Then where do we find him? You're all more experienced with the way this Mustang character operates than I am. What would you predict to be his next plan of action? If I were in his place... Well, I would most likely take the Fuhrer's wife as a hostage. Gotta be a tough situation for her to be there. Because she's like the only one that's not really down with everything that's going on. As badass as she is to know that you're in this room of people that are completely against you. But then you're also with the head of the bad guys, basically. Father, the, the dwarf in the flask. But I, I still am curious what he actually is. Like, what... What is he at the core of his being? Where did he come from? What, what, where did he originate? Like, I'm, I want all these questions answered. Ah! Hey, move your vehicle. <laughs> what, Roy Mustang? They really are gonna take her as a hostage. Was Olivia supposed to say that? Was that a part of the, the game plan? And why, uh, yeah, because it is futile. Nobody really cares about her. She has no idea that, that anything is actually what it is as far as I know. So it is kind of odd that they're going to take her as a hostage. Please forgive us for startling you like this. I need you to come with me, Madame Fuhrer. We have no intention of harming you. There must be some information they feel she has. Like, without even knowing who the Fuhrer really is and stuff like that, just some information that she's just kind of come across or seen and just it just seems like everyday stuff and she doesn't think twice about it but for them knowing it might be the most useful information it's the only thing i could think of because i don't i don't understand why because again you can't really utilize her as a hostage to gain anything because none of them really care about her she's just a placement so to speak okay all right I really didn't think that that was actually going to be what they did. When Olivia said that, I thought she was just kind of just throwing some smoke in the air. But that's actually what was happening. And it does make me wonder if her telling them that was a part of the plan. Or if she actually just assumed that and was right about it. Either way. I blow that flower like Mario. I keep that fire in my hand. Smoking so much, it's like all I show. I don't think they understand. I blow that flower like Mario. I keep that fire in my hand. I just be rolling, that's all I know. I don't think they understand. I just be rocking the boat. Got me a bop in a hole. I'm locked in the coast. I got me a shot and I know. So everything I drop is cold. I be like, who wanna blow on an L? We hit the hotel. A couple of bitches, a little Ciroc. Got one of my niggas. We feeling the vibe. It's comfortable, Pimbill. Woo! 